Hey there, fourth grade mathematicians. It's Mr. Tang, welcoming you back for a new week of math here on BCPS TV. Our lesson for this week will focus on some measurement and data standards. More specifically, converting units of capacity and weight. This lesson is the second lesson of the week for May 25th through May 29th. Our objective for today is that we will recognize the relative size of customary units of capacity and weight by converting from a larger unit to a smaller unit in order to solve real world problems. So that's a pretty hefty objective. So let's take a second and just break that down. So what will we be doing today? We're gonna to recognize the relative size of customary units of capacity and weight. So we're not just looking at capacity or weight, we're looking at both of those today. So we have a lot in store for you. And when we recognize the relative size, we're able to compare the different units of each, of capacity and of weight. How are we? By converting from a larger unit to a smaller unit. When we think about capacity, what are the units that we talk about? What about for weight? So these are some things to think about before we get going. Why? We're gonna be able to do this in order to solve real world problems. When we take a look at customary units of capacity and weight, these things are all around us. Let's explore more. Take a look at the two images shown on your screen. Take a moment and reflect. What do you notice that's the same? And what do you notice that's different? I see that both images show milk. The containers in both images are white containers. I'm guessing that means it's regular milk. I prefer chocolate milk. I see that the first image has four containers, whereas the second is just one. This makes me wonder, which of these images has more milk? The first image shows four quarts. The second one shows one gallon. Did you already know that? When analyzing units of measurement, we often talk about them using two different systems, the metric and the customary. Today, we will be focusing on the customary units for both capacity and weight. When we measure capacity using customary units, we use units such as fluid ounces, cups, pints, quarts, and gallons. The table shows some equivalents of the units. Take a look at the table. What relationships do you notice? Can you tell by looking which is the biggest? How about the smallest? Let's turn to our friends at Pearson for more on equivalence with customary units of capacity. As you watch and listen, think about strategies that you can use to convert one unit of capacity to another. Feel free to use the visual at the top of your screen to help you in thinking about customary units of capacity. Notice though, it does not include fluid ounces. How can you convert from one unit of capacity to another? Think about this question during the lesson. Ms. Neely's class needs five gallons of punch for family math night. How much of each ingredient is needed to make enough punch with the recipe shown? Units of capacity include gallons, quarts, pints, cups, and fluid ounces. According to the conversion chart, how many pints equal a gallon? Select your answer. So it looks like we have to take a look at our gallon and our pints. So if we take a look at one whole gallon as represented by the red bar, 
we can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pints. Eight pints equals one gallon. Step one. Five gallons of punch are needed. Convert five gallons to pints. Use the conversion table. Five gallons equals 40 pints. What is another way to convert five gallons to pints besides using a table? Convert five gallons to pints. Multiply five times the number of pints in one gallon. Five times eight equals 40. Step two. Add the number of pints in the recipe to find how many batches the class needs to make. Five plus four plus one equals 10. There are 10 pints in the recipe. Use N to represent the number of batches needed. 10 times N equals 40. So N equals four. The class needs to make four batches of the recipe. What does the equation 10 times N equals 40 represent? There are 10 pints in one batch, and N batches are needed to make 40 pints in all. Step 3. Find how much of each ingredient is in four batches. 4 times 5 equals 20 pints. 4 times 4 equals 16 pints. And 4 times 1 equals 4 pints. 20 pints of apple juice, 16 pints of lemon-lime soda, and 4 pints of frozen orange juice are needed. Now you know how to convert from one unit of capacity to another. Great job! Now let's shift gears a bit and talk about customary units of weight. When we measure weight using customary units, we use units such as ounces, pounds, and tons. Even though the word ounces is used here, try not to get confused with fluid ounces. Fluid ounces are used to measure capacity, things like liquid, whereas ounces are used to measure weight. Take a look at the table. What relationships do you notice? Now let's go back to our friends at Pearson for more on equivalence with customary units of weight. As you watch and listen, continue to think about the strategies that you can use to convert from one unit to another. How can you convert from one unit of weight to another? Let's find out. Mark made dinner for his family using the ingredients shown. How many nine ounce servings did Mark make? Weight is how heavy an object is. Units of weight include ounces, pounds, and tons. Are all the weights given in the same unit? No. The weight of the tomato sauce is given in ounces, but the weights of the pasta and meatballs are given in pounds. To convert the weight of the pasta and meatballs to ounces, multiply each weight by 16. Find the weight of the pasta in ounces. 1 times 16 equals 16. The pasta weighs 16 ounces. Find the weight of the meatballs. 1 and 1 half times 16 equals, open parenthesis, 1 times 16, close parenthesis, plus, open parenthesis, 1 half times 16, close parenthesis, which equals 16 plus 8 equals 24. So, 1 and 1 half pounds equals 24 ounces. The meatballs weigh 24 ounces. Why do you need to convert the weight of the pasta and meatballs? 
The weight of the pasta and meatballs are given in pounds, but the weight of the tomato sauce is given in ounces. They need to be in the same unit to add the weights together. Since the problem is asking for the number of 9 ounce servings, convert all the weights to ounces. Add the weights of all the ingredients to find the total ounces. The pasta weighs 16 ounces, the meatballs weigh 24 ounces, and the tomato sauce weighs 14 ounces. 16 plus 24 plus 14 equals 54. The weight of all the ingredients is 54 ounces. Divide to find the number of servings. Use S to represent the number of servings. 54 divided by 9 equals S. So S equals 6. Mark made 6 9-ounce servings. How does the bar diagram show that you need to divide to find the number of servings? The bar diagram shows that S servings with 9 ounces in each must equal a total of 54 ounces. Since you know the total weight and the weight of each serving, divide to find the number of servings. Now you know how to convert from one unit of weight to another. Way to go, boys and girls. Now it's your turn to explore. In the Try It section of your Schoology page, you'll find this assignment for customary units of capacity and weight. It'll look something like this. You'll have several questions to go through. Take your time, read all your directions carefully, use all your tools, such as being able to write on your screen, and make sure you use scrap paper if needed. When you feel confident and ready to, move on to the formative assessment portion of the lesson found in the Show What You Know section in Schoology. This will prompt you to head over to Pearson, where your teacher should have assigned you two quick checks to work on, 13-2 and 13-3. There, you will find similar questions to those that we reviewed today. Take your time, read through your directions, and use scrap paper if you need to. And as a reminder, if you have access, you should be completing six to eight Dreambox lessons a week. You must first log on to BCPS1 using your own username and password, then access Dreambox due to instructional and productivity tools icon. That's it for us this week, boys and girls. And as always, stay safe, wash those hands, and do the math.